when you when you're uh, if somebody is sitting on a chairlift and they they look down at you and you're skiing, what kind of impression would you like to leave that? When you're when you're in the chairlift and you're sitting in the chairlift and you're on a busy run, you're, you're riding over a busy run, what kind of skier catches your eye? What are they doing? So <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna start off here in the, in the chat function, and I want you to use some descriptive words. These aren't, these aren't technical words. These, these aren't the technical we, words we use for ski improvement. These are just descriptive words of what good skiing is or how I would like to ski or how I want to be seen when I ski, right? So write those um, comments down. We'll take, a, take a minute here or so. And the chat function's at the bottom. Scroll to the bottom and see the chat. You can click on that. And it should say to everyone. And then just type in some descriptive words. And I'm going to give you a hint. There's no wrong words. There's no wrong answers. But it's what what catches your eye when you watch a skier? Start writing this down. Oh, I see some already. Good. Fluent, effortless, smooth, graceful, flowing down. Beautiful. Well, put some more in there. Share them with us. Share, share your thoughts. Dynamic. Great. Fearless. It's beautiful. Keep going. Flow. Uh, this here shows enjoyment. Okay, I'm going to ask you. So they're confident, elegant. What, what, what is enjoyment though? What, what shows enjoyment? Be confident and elegant. Be more descriptive. Right, write all these descriptive words in there because they're all perfect. And I and I want to collectively kind of come together with them. So put in a few more. To put in one, put in another one. Making nice terms. What is the what is the nice term? What 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 catches your eye about it? It's enjoyable to watch. Yes, absolutely, it's enjoyable to watch. Rhythm. Ah, I like rhythm. I think Lynn put that in there because she knows I like that one. Right? It's it's, it's rhythm. It's like musical. It has music to it hip on the snow. So nothing wrong with hip on the snow. That's that's maybe a performance. And we start we start to start to move a little technical on that. But that's okay. Right? Things you like. Okay. Now um, is the share screen on? Lynn, is the share screen on? I want to share my screen. Can I do that now? I'll try, okay? Post disabled participant. Yeah, you have to let me share my screen, I think, Lynn. Ah, uh, here we go. Give me a sec here. Oh, I don't know where they go. Sorry, I had it. Uh, I went through this earlier and I had it here. Uh,
So uh, while Otto is finding the file, uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, I saw more requests for the English only session. So there will be no translation for today, but I'm recording today's lecture and I'm going to share it through YouTube. And I just sent out the questionnaire so that we can better understand the audience today. And uh, uh, you may want to just fill in it. Okay. So that's all that I want. Now I have to find you guys. <laughs> It happens, Otto. No, I'm pretty, I don't use it enough. So. Here we go. Okay. Now, can you see this? Yeah. Okay. So here is, uh, sorry for taking a little bit, while here, but uh, I have um, just Richie Berger. Okay. And so, uh, we're going to play him, and he's got some short terms, okay? And I just want to, want, we'll look at it a couple of times. Just just look at it, not from a technical perspective, just from an enjoyment, just enjoy it. Like, it's just, it's nice, and it's, This part here, right? Just slow motion a little bit. Sorry, don't read this. Okay, so where's my group again? Okay, here we go. Um, now, go to the chat function and uh, just in descriptive words, not technical ski words, in descriptive words, write down what uh, you think of um, a Richie Berger skiing, okay? Just write down some, you know, oh, there was some other one, candy for the eyes, cut up her body fluence. Okay, so now, Who's Richie? Okay. So Alex had rhythm again. Correct. Smooth. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Really, it was very smooth. Flow. Go from one turn, and we'll, then we talk well balanced. Now, well balanced that starts to get technical. He has a very close stance. That's technical. Okay, so I and those are okay, but I want big picture. Okay, big picture, elastic. Okay, yeah. So it seems like he's an elastic band moving, dynamic bouncing back and forth. Yes. Okay. Like a dance move. Ah, oh, yeah, that's very good. Very, very good. Like, you know, it's like a, yeah, it's like a, a gymnast or, or a graceful dancer, you know, flowing. It doesn't seem like there's anything out of place, right? Okay. Now, um, going back to where I started, how I ski, how I want to ski, and how I want to be seen skiing. Now, in the chat, if you like Richie skiing and you want to ski like that, write in yes as fast as you can. If you don't want to ski like that, no, no, don't put anything in there. And there should be 30 some odd answers, 50 people in there should be like yes right away. Okay. All right. Now, um, Good. Now let's, uh, 
I hope uh, there should be a lot more yeses than that in the chat room. Come on. Absolutely yes, says Lynn. Finally. Like, holy smokes, yes. Do I want to ski like that? Okay. Now, can I, can I find something wrong with Richie skiing? Sure. I, I, I know, I know Richie's skiing and I know there's a little thing that he does and I say, hey, try and do this. Do I need to? Absolutely not. Is Richie, now here's another question. Is Richie going as fast and hard as he can go or is he kind of skiing at 60 or 70% of his, his ability? Write down what percentage you think he's going in the chat room. Fifty percent, fifty percent, thirty percent. Oh, you think you can get a lot better? All right. Again, okay. very good. Okay. So this slope, fifty percent. Yeah, he's and he's he's doing, he's doing what I would call a round short radius turn. I think he's maybe sixty or seventy percent. You know, sixty or seventy, seventy-five percent maybe. But it's very nice skiing, and it's linked. And it's smooth and it's moving uh, from one turn to the next gracefully. Right? And there's no, there's no sudden movement, is there? There's no, uh, the hand doesn't bob up and down, the shoulders don't twist around. Uh, somebody put in there earlier that the legs are like locked together nicely. Uh, he has a narrow stance. Yes. All those things are, are absolutely right. And you want to ski like him. And this is a great example. And I want to, um, you know, sometimes we go to the technical points first. But when you ski, when you say, how do I want to ski? How do I want to be seen skiing? How do I ski? What can I do? You start off with uh, start off with some things like this. I'm just going to write them write them down in there. Rhythm, speed, performance level. We don't always have to have the top performance level. Turn, shape. Uh, these are. Uh, rhythm, speed, performance level, turn shape. These are these are 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 along with your descriptive words. Your descriptive words are are critical when we want to we want to say this is how I want to present myself to the world of skill. And when you look at uh, you have the right words. So when you look at Richie, you have the right words. And from there, then you, you start looking at 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 the rhythm. Okay. Uh, what what was Richie's rhythm? Okay, so write that in uh, the chat room. You know, was it uh, short, round, short, medium, medium, long, long, GS turns, super G turns, right? So they were short. Yeah, they were they were. Uh, round short turns okay round short turns um and by the look at this slope and in, in the camera richie has done this he made a number of runs down here on purpose for this video so that it was a round short radius turn it gives him a bit of time so that was his rhythm what was his speed what was, what was his speed? Was he max speed? You know, and, and speed is different from his ability to do this. So was he going as fast as he can ski? Or was he going 50%, right? Or if he was doing a snowplow, which is 2%, was he doing a snowplow? What, 50%, right? So he might've been going, I'm gonna say that, that Richie's maybe going somewhere between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour. And Richie can probably go 
100 kilometers an hour, 110, maybe 120. But if you're, if you're in that 50% range, right, you're probably okay. Medium speed, well, medium speed might, might be a little bit higher than this because if you did a medium turn, you would be going a little bit faster. What was his uh, performance level? Okay, was he going, was he going at uh, his max performance level expert, like his double black diamond, right? Okay, you know, and if we, if we were going, if we were going double black diamond, we would see his hip on the snow, right? But we don't see his hip on the snow, but we see it rhythmically. Right? So, you know, if we're going medium speed, you know, medium turn shape with medium rhythm, do we put our hip on the snow? Or is that, is that something else that is a different level, right? Now, um, to get to these, uh, let's just, you know, I'm gonna drag him back a little bit here so that you can watch it because these are, you know, I think this is a really, for every level of skier, this is a very nice turn to make. If you're sitting in the chairlift above him and there's a bunch of skiers around him, I think he would be the skier that you would pick out and say, I want to be like him. This might even be, you know, a, not super short, like he's moving his body over so that it's, it's not quite a, a medium. Okay. So this is something, you know, if we're going to say, hey, uh, we're going to, We're gonna, you know, if, if we if we say to somebody, you know, if you ask yourself, would you like to ski like that? I think all of us would say yes. Would our mother like to, you know, if we were to show our mother or our father and we skied like that, could they relate to it? Sure. You know, is there is there more high performance skiing? Sure, there's more high performance skiing and maybe in different situations. But this is this is really nice, really nice skiing. Now. Um, what we've done is we've, we've, we've kind of explored kind of descriptive terms and we've broken that down into turn shape, into rhythm and speed, uh, performance. Um, and these all are parts of what it means to be free, free flowing down the mountain, right? And then, and then we can then ask ourselves, you know, the smaller questions. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes as key teachers or as people that want to learn, we often first go to the technical movements that we make. But the technical, the technical movements, which, you know, in actual fact, it's just the body movement. What, what body part do we move when and at what time of the term? And how will that help us get the picture of how we want to ski? Okay. Often we go there first without having a picture of what we want at the end. All right. So, I, I what I what I thought with with Richie skiing here, it was it, it's so beautiful, right? Now, now we, we could talk about the technical movements because we know what kind of movement will get us to ski like that, right? Okay. So if you just look at him, if you, if you look at at Richie ski and these turns, okay. Take another moment here. And then, and then, um, write, it, write in some movement, and they don't have to be actual technical words out of the, uh, you know, CSIA or Australian or New Zealand technical manuals, but just things that you like about his body, right? Because really that's what it is. What body segment are we going to move when? to get our scheme to look like his. So type, use the, use the chat, chat thing there. Feel free to put in your thoughts. 
I love, I love when, when people write and, and you just, and then, you know, again, I encourage you to be more involved because it's not really wrong. You know, we learn, we learn a little bit from each other. I'll kind of guide, guide what we do. Okay. Nobody's writing in the WeChat. Oh, just a sec, mine isn't scrolling down. Medium speed. All right, who's writing in there? What 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 body movement does he make? Turn legs, ankle, femurs, roll. Okay. Ankles. Oh, let me, oops, 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 stop. Okay. Um, uh, he is hardly doing anything. Stop sharing. We don't want that ad. Okay. Let's see if I can get you some more skiing here. Oh, screen share. Okay. So this is pretty amazing skiing, isn't it? This is pretty, pretty amazing skiing. And uh, do you notice he makes mistakes from time to time? Or um, I wouldn't actually call them mistakes. I would say uh, he's skiing how he wants to ski. You know, I see his head bob and I see sometimes uh, off balance a little bit. But anytime we push our ability, anytime we push our ability, what we see, <laughs> um, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to a position where we're out of balance. I mean, we're maybe not in balance. In, in skiing, the key thing in, in some of our skiing is um, let's see if I can. This is Takao, something a little bit different. You see the rhythm change? Okay. And if you look at if you look at this one compared to the last one, is this performance higher or lower? Right? Com compared to um, Richie, the performance on this is a little bit higher. There's some, there's, he's doing something a little bit different with his hips. And, and we may not like it as much as you see Richie's is a little bit uh, neater, okay? But he's pushing himself. The rhythm is faster. The speed is faster. The performance is higher. So these are all those descriptive words I talked about, okay? Now the turn shape is bigger. And there's different ways in, our, in how we move, right? So subtly here is, He's, he's turning his upper body or he's rotating his hips, right? And that, that's why it's maybe not as fluid as Richie's, okay? 
but never, nevertheless, it's good. It's good skiing. Okay. And now this is very much uh, similar to what uh, Richie's is. Okay. Uh, whoever put those lines on, you need to take them off. You have to go and, and untake them off. Because I can't do that. So here, right, what we what we see with this here is we see a tighter turn and we see a greater range of motion. Okay. Um. Excuse me for a sec. So I'm just waiting for an ad to, to go through. Okay. Now, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, I'm going to show you a few things. You never see Richie again here. This video is on YouTube, Ideal Short Turns, Richie Berger, Ski World 20. So, um, you know, in the in the chat column, I I uh, said Richie's Richie's almost doing nothing when he he skis, right? And and why I wanted to have this chat is how I ski, how I want to ski, and how I want to be seen skiing. If we if we get down into the the technical aspect. We start to grind away at the technical movements and we start to make more of what there isn't, right? Richie is not doing a lot, okay? So, um, and, and that's, that's really what it is. The simpler your skiing can be, the simpler your movement pattern, and the more consistent, and, and we still have to be pre precise with those moving patterns. And sometimes when the snow changes, like the, the, the bumps here, we saw the, we have to adjust to the terrain and that, that those decisions of where we place our, our feet underneath our body, they come with experience. Our speed and forces and, and how the ski slope, that comes with experience. So we can't short, short circuit in the experience element of it now. But when I talk about um, Richie, okay, right here, you know, he's at the top of the turn and he's standing, he's just standing, okay, right, and he's pretty level here. Right, and he's just, he's standing on that ski. Okay, now, um, he, he has turned his legs, right? And it's not just the femur, 
If the femur turns, then the knee goes in this way, right? But we don't want that to happen. What we want, what we want to do is we want the skis to start turning underneath us. So this ski, right, has to start turning in this direction. So we want, we want, we want this leg to turn and the ski kind of to turn as well. His body, this, the ski is starting to turn like I showed you. His body is still facing this way. But if, if I, if I, um, Move them along a little bit. Okay. Right, so I move them along just a bit more. Okay. Now we see, um, and, and this is the critical thing, we see. Uh, he's, he's standing against the ski here. He is facing his body. If I, if I put an arrow, he's facing towards you in your screen and his skis are turned across the way he's going. And you can see this a lot. So he's turned his legs. And if you, if you look at me, look at the camera and, and my hands are my legs and I turn my legs. That's what he's done. Okay, that's all he's done. And that's the first thing he did up in the turn. He, he turns them a little bit. And when we turn a little bit, sometimes it feels a lot. He turns it a lot. He, he then has um, angulation, okay? And now he also, as time goes on, if he turns his leg, he can then uh, separate at the hip. So then he gets, angulation, this process. So we, we have the, the bend and the bend is here at the hip, okay? Now, I know, I know what a lot of people think. They think, ah, well, he's bending here, okay? And that's wrong, that's wrong. What that is, is because of the way we look at the photo, that knee is bent forward. The, the, knee, is, the, the knee is not a joint that, if this is my knee, my knee doesn't do this. My knee only does forward and back, okay? It can slightly go in a little bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually move in. If I move my knee in, my hip goes the opposite way. My hip goes out and then my body faces, and these are another two terms I taught. Then my body faces where I'm going, not or where I'm going to go, not where I'm going. Richie, right? If if I if I clear all this, Richie is facing to me, and he is facing where he's going to go. If his skis let go, he would come out the screen at us. Okay, but because his skis are turning, it's taking him this way. He he doesn't face this way. He knows he's going to get there. Okay, but he faces in the short term. He doesn't have the time to follow the skis as much. He faces straight down the hill, right? So, so one, Richie was well balanced. Richie turns his legs. Right? When he turns his legs, that allows him from an inclined position to move his hip in. Okay? And that's, that's all there really is to his skiing. It's very, very simple. His feet, his feet are side by side. Often if we, if we push this knee in, then we start to get a, a little triangle of white in here, okay? I call that the white triangle of death, or the white triangle of do, because what that means is your outside leg is, is behind and you're, you're driving your, nip in, your, your knee in, but we don't see that here, okay? So if we watch him, watch him ski these turns here, uh, he will, face us all the time, okay? 
face, he faces us and the skis do the turning. And we see it here and we see his feet side by side. Right there, they're side by side. His legs are parallel, okay? So one, one knee is not in and, you know, the inside knee sometimes gets shorter because it's higher. But see how he faces us and the legs do all the turning, okay? And the hands, it, it's, if, if he was playing any sport, it would just be smooth and turning. And, and this, this is the way I like to ski. This is the way when I go out in the morning and I'm, I go up Whistler and I ski under the emerald chair at the top there and I see all the instructors hanging out over top of me, I go out and I want to ski like this, okay? And I don't, I, I hate cameras. I hate taking up a run, slowing and take a photo. I just want to ski all the time, right? Feet side by side, okay? They barely, you know, the inside ski gets slightly ahead, but not by much, okay? Um, all right, let's, Let's, uh, let's find another one here. Oh, I like this one here. Okay. How's everybody doing out there? Okay. I got to pause this. You can't see that, can you? Lynn, can you see that? Lynn, can you see that here? Lynn? Yes. Yes, you can see that's here. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, uh, sorry, Otto. I think it's an ad of a uh, carve. It's not Rich Burger skiing. No, no, I've got a new skier up there. Okay, hang on. Uh, let me do that again. I got to get a new one up here. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now here you can we see go. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Complete with music. I'm going to start him right back here. You know, these are little older videos, but I, 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 I like them. Uh, you know, when we drive a car, we're going, and this is one of the one of my favorite analogies, and you probably might have heard it before. If we're driving a car, we turn the wheels, turn the steering wheel, the wheels turn, the body of the car follows along. The same the same applies with skiing. Okay. Now here it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so the body is facing. If he was to release this turn. His body faces uh, where he's going, not where the skis are taking him. Okay. And when we, we, at the start of the turn here, right, he's released the turn, his body is coming towards us. The skis are still going to the side. And now he's going to start, he's tall, his feet are side by side, okay? His, his feet are side by side. Okay. So I've got parallel legs. Feet are side by side, not much lead change. His shoulders, his hips are, are, are straight across, his hands are straight across. He's, he's inclined a little bit, okay? So he's not doing anything. He's, he's standing on his feet. Seems so simple, right? The start of the turn and he's tipping over like he's riding a bicycle. Okay. And he, he stands in the middle of his foot as he goes down. And now his performance, his rhythm changes, his turn shape changes, but he doesn't change his ski. 
although he faces directly down the hill more and he uses his legs to turn more because the turn, the turn shape in a, in a big turn, I don't have to turn a lot because I've got a lot of time to turn. In the short turn, I'm turning more. Okay, well, we see the legs working. Okay, here, here it's nice. Okay. The feet and the legs are side by side. There's not much lead change and the legs bend. You know, people say I've got to lean on the front of the boot. Not really, I've got to stay in the middle of the arch and I bend my legs so that I can get my hips from one side to the other. You know, and, and people call it the crossover, excuse the cross under or I cross middle, but the legs are, the feet are side by side and the upper body does nothing. It just faces where I'm gonna go and then my legs, you have my legs turn nicely here. And whether I go slow or whether I go fast, right? To go faster, all I do is turn more and, and let myself move in more. I get inside a little bit. Okay. Um, that. Uh, one more, one more, how about one more? Uh, Got to get it up, everybody. And then, then I'll. Uh... There we go. We go. No. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Here we go. Sorry. Okay, so Richie Burger in the bumps. You know, and when we when we watch these bump skiing, this is this is outstanding bump skiing. But like the other things, his feet are side by side, and all we see is them using he he's using his range of motion. He's using his ankles, which bend very little in ski boots. The knee and the hip uses a lot, and when it gets really when he goes really fast, he starts to use his spine. His his shoulders come even lower, but he basically keeps his feet underneath him. He keeps his feet side by side. He works very hard at the core. He keeps his hands out from one side to the other. Good solid pull plan. And to get this, you have to go slow at first and then slowly work up to it. But he places his feet between where he's gonna land and the forces so he can absorb it. And he gets that from a lot of experience, okay? And that's how I want to ski, okay? But what we, what we see is we see the feet side by side. We see the legs working smoothly. This is, these bumps are extremely big. He's going very fast and it's very steep. The performance level is very high. But, you know, we look at the rhythm, we look at the speed, we look at the performance, and we can look good. What we need to do is we just need to find the terrain that we're good at, choose the rhythm and performance level that we want to ski at. And then we need to say, okay, technically, I want to keep it simple. And I want to gain experience by exposing myself to snow conditions or terrain changes that will challenge me a little bit. Because every time we challenge ourselves a little bit, there's small adjustments we have to make. If we, if we go and make something too much, then it becomes kind of out of our control. 
Okay. That was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty nice. Okay. Now, um, there's my little tech talk. That's how I want to ski. And so when I go out in the morning, uh, it was sort of black from here, morning session, or when I'm in Wayne Long skiing or anywhere, I'm going to have a morning session and I go down. I, I always think about how, I, how I'm going to look. What's my personality on my skis going to be like? And what's, you know, I, I love skiing with rhythm and with energy. That, that's kind of the words I use, rhythm and energy. Uh, and then, you know, then I'll choose the performance level. You know, if I'm just warming up, the performance level will be a little bit lower. And as I, as I, as I warm up, it'll go a little bit higher. And when I'm feeling good and strong, then I'll push the performance level a little bit higher, right? But not always, like if, if we look at the first video of Richie Berger, sometimes good skiing, the best skiing we can do is 70% of our top. And then, and then we get that free flowing, that rhythm, and we have the coordination of the movement patterns. And the movement patterns are simple things. I wanna stay balanced with my feet side by side. I want to incline a little bit, start turning my legs, use a little bit of angulation. Okay. The skis then, I get parallel ski edge, they tip and I move them through and then I soften and relax to let my hips go across my skis and my skis go underneath so that I make my turns. That's how I want to ski. So I start with those big concepts and then I work down to, to those things. And, and I tell you, I spend most of my time thinking about the balance point on my feet relative to the snow conditions and the terrain changes. And I, the, the better I ski, the more precise my balance is because it allows me to turn my legs in my, in my hip socket, right? And then if I do that, it allows my, my hip to go in, right? So I'm always trying to maintain balance. And then I can soften and then I can link, right? And I try to have that transition not so long. I try to have it smooth. And I prefer, I prefer, you know, big turns are nice when I'm going somewhere. I've got to get somewhere fast. But I, I like, uh, even big turns, I like, I like them to have rhythm, right? It's, it's like you're in a nice dance. Somebody said on there, it's like it's a smooth dance. Okay, so I think let's, uh, let's open the floor. And uh, I don't know if there's any questions people have for me. Um, Otto is encouraging to open our camera if possible and create the feeling of being together. It does. I like seeing faces. Um, dynamic, so powerful, like surfing ocean waves. These are great descriptive words. Does anybody have any questions for me on, on what we saw on, on my little chat on, on skiing? You know, it sounds simple. Keeping it simple sometimes is hard for us because we're always looking for that. that uh, we're looking for the person with the magic wand to come and tap us on the shoulder. And if we find that little, little secret hid, hidden gem that somebody move somebody's making that I have that'll that'll make me ski like the top skiers, then that's great. But a lot of it is just a lot of practice and, and keeping it simple. Uh, do you ski mostly with internal cues? Uh, Kita, good question. Um, internal cues versus what the skis skis do. Well, I, I definitely feel what the skis do, but you know, I ski by feel, and feeling is typically the bottom of my foot. I feel a lot on the bottom of my feet, where the balance is, and I know from experience. You know, at the start of the turn, say the balance is towards the front of my the, the front of my arch of my foot, right? If this if this is is the arch of my foot, uh, the ball would just be back of the ball, and it would move to just in front of the heel pad at the end of the turn. And and whether I'm skiing bumps, short or long turns, powder, that that is a cue that I need all the time. Um, you know, I do feel if the ski slides or if it uh, carves, but those are usually 
you know, that's usually a result of something that I've done. I've, I've purposely turned my legs more and, and decreased the edge and, and so that I, I can I can do that. And one thing I know about, you know, having taught a lot over the years is uh, there's, there's, there's some different learning styles. We all, we grow up learning. And if, if you think about how you learn best, that's something you need to communicate with your coach. But we, we are, uh, there's four basic learning styles. There's the watcher who, who looks at something, uh, copies. There's the doer who needs to get out there and try it. Um, there's the thinker, and that's very analytical. What's that little movement and, and, what, and lots of questions. And then there's the, the feeler. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, when we grow up, nobody taught us how to talk. Nobody taught us how to walk. What we did is we watched, right? And, and we, saw, we saw our siblings, our parents walk, and then we learned from that. So we watched and we did it and we tried. You know, we felt when we hit our head against the table that that was probably not a good move we made. So, so we, we, we get up and we walk again. So inherently, most of us are, are watchers, doers, and then somewhat thinkers. But if we want to be experts, if, if you want to be an expert skier, you want to be uh, an expert, expert tennis player, then I believe you need to feel it. You need to feel with your body um, the difference between a move that has good consequences and good results versus one that consequences aren't so good and the results aren't so good. Okay, so, so ultimately, you will progress from a watcher doer into a feeler. And the feeler will start to give you the right and, and wrong kind of, it's not really right and wrong, it's just consequences better or, better or worse. But that's where the fine tuning starts to come. Um, intermediate or advanced turn, should upper body face downhill, that's a short. The upper body, uh, this is uh, SCB, Steve. Um, the body should face, uh, where you're going, okay? So in a long term, in a long term, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go over here for a little bit and then I'm slowly gonna, my body's gonna face the other way. In a short turn, facing downhill, it's a rounder, medium turn, it's more like this. Now, when I, when I turn my skis, if I do a bigger turn, my, my skis might turn a little bit more. Right? My skis may turn a little bit more. In a short turn, they're going to turn a lot more. Right? So the, the, the body always faces where you're going. And what I mean by that is if I was to release my skis off the snow and gravity pulled me, I'd be facing where the force is taking me. Right? I know that I'm going to go over there. I don't want to face over there. I, I've got to be patient and let my skis take me there. I saw Richie do that. Uh, you said it when he was in the bumps working hard. Isn't that a bad thing? Well, I heard I heard you wrong. Um, it's a tough thing. So you said Richie was using his spine when he was in the bumps working hard. It's not a bad thing. Um, it's not a bad thing. What happens is his, we all have, uh, with, our, with our legs, we have a certain range of motion. Taller people have a longer range of motion, shorter people have a shorter range of motion. And so we, we wanna, when we ski, we wanna stay within the middle 40 or 50% of that. That's where we're most efficient. Muscular structure, we're most efficient in, in that range of motion. When my leg is, is fully straight or when my leg is fully bent, I'm, I'm weaker and I'm less balanced. Richie stays in there and in those bumps, they were massive and he had massive forces. And then he, he went outside his range of motion. And what happened is the, is the body starts bending like this. And that's hard to control. He, he ha has to use it to absorb that much. It's, it's the, at the end. What happens is when the, the spine bends and the body goes forward, the weight goes forward. And I think we've all experienced that if we hit a bump and we end up going over the top. We didn't use the range of motion effectively in our legs. And then our spine becomes comes involved. He handles it quite well because he's, I, I know uh, Richie, he's very fit and he's very strong, okay? Um, so that was, it was more situational for him. Yeah. So I don't think it's bad or wrong. It was just the situation that he, he got into, okay? 
Uh, good questions. Wow. Any more? Happy, happy to help and discuss things. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. Welcome. Happy to, uh, always happy to answer your questions. Yeah, so for whoever got questions, you can type in the chat box and also you can just open your uh, mic and uh, ask directly, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I like the last comment, uh, Luke and Otto, I like your, uh, my dress is uh, the jacket. My, uh, like the, when you show us your hands, you look like a Tai Chi master. <laughs> I'm a ski master. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So when we talk about uh, internal cue, I feel it's a kind of body awareness. I ought to remember that when I ski with you, you ask me to feel my feet. I couldn't feel it. So each time I, when I ski with you, I fall. I kept on falling. Because <laughs> it seems to me I was listening to my feet and I heard nothing that I fell. Until one day I started to feel you know, my feet, I realized it's a dialogue. And you know that I injured my knee last December when I was in Whistler. So my, uh, you know, lateral uh, legment was torn. So I started the rehab and I, I do a lot of uh, uh, exercises and also stretches. And during the whole course, I started to feel my body. It seems to me that I'm building the, the awareness, the connection with my body. And I got injured and I feel that um, my left leg and right leg then does not feel the same uh, or to the same level of turning the both sides. Uh, I didn't, I couldn't feel it the same way. So I was trying to modify the, my internal cue with this, the video so that I can adjust. It seems a two clock. I need to make it in sync with each other but you know yeah. the rehab process is actually helping me to build more body awareness and it seems that i'm uh, i'm still skiing the same but i get better awareness of my body so i knew what i've done i knew why i yeah. got shoulder rotation why i was you know you know uh, dropping I, I wouldn't you know couldn't control the speed I think the inner process is building, and yeah, that's a that's a good foundation. Yeah, it is, and it, it takes time. And you have two feet; you, you turn left and you turn right. And this is one way to say, "Hey, we all, you know, we all are uh, uh, we're stronger on on one side than the other." Typically, if you're right-handed. Your, your turns on the right side, turns to the left with your right leg would be your better turns. And so sometimes you can say, geez, this turn is, is better and my weight goes from here to here at this time of the turn to this time of the turn. And then you can use that to match it on the other side of the turn. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, a couple more things there I, I will answer. Don't be shocked, I've got, I've got ugly feet. Okay, I've got ugly feet. Got ugly. Here's my foot. Planning on it. When I when I turn, I start here. That's my my weight is. It's all along my foot. I don't raise my toes. They're all on the footbed. But I feel it's centered there. And when I when I go through the turn, I get to the mid of the arch, and then I get back here, like to about there. That's that's the um, that that movement with my feet where my balance is. That's those are my targets. That's my bullseye. So if I was playing dart, I have to get there every time. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a good turn. And it's it's precise to the point that that when I use that the, the tip of the pen to show you, I can feel it. Like our, our feet have, um, I've been told, 220,000 nerve endings in our feet. Similar to our hand, they have, uh, our hands have a lot of nerve endings, so we can feel. We just need to activate them and be aware of them. And I think Lynn's point is, uh, I wasn't aware of that before. And so sometimes in our ski boots with the pressure and the pain, and um, they're not as, we're not as aware of them as we can be. 
And so that's a, that's a big leap for you, Lynn. And I think if, if anybody can take that away, uh, you know, that's awesome. So um, search for that, try to feel another, another, another sensation. Sometimes it's, it's visual, right? So often skiers, their hands, right? We, we rely on balance in our, in, our, in our inner ear. And I use my feet to be precise with it too. But if, if you know, if I don't know where my hands are, sometimes I don't know where my body is because my eyes, right? If when I ski, if my, if my hands are, are out to the side and visible, that helps with my mind understanding exactly where my body parts are and how they move, right? And I know I can feel if one hand goes up here, right? Okay, and I, I throw a beer can into the back seat, then I know I'm, I'm in trouble. So then I, I go visually, I go, oh, I have to get, I kept them out here. And if we watch Richie Berger skiing in that first video, he was very disciplined with his hands. You know, a little exercise I do is sometimes I have my students balance poles on the back of their hands, right? And so that the upper body, and this, this is, goes for that simplicity sake where if my hands are here, my upper body is not moving, then all the movements, the minor movements are done with the lower body, right? So that's why I'm trying to keep it simple. Oh, hey, here's another question. Will your Canadian coach teach in Chongli this snow season? I sure wish I was going back to Chongli. I dream of that every day. Um, the challenge is uh, getting a visa right now with the pandemic. Uh, we, we could have got a work visa, but it, uh, it requires us uh, early in the season, we looked into it. It was very expensive to get and, and took about three months. And then you have to go in quarantine for three, maybe four weeks. And so it was very long process to get to Chongli. We hope the pandemic subsides. And um, as soon as soon as the travel arrangements can be, be made and um, aren't too cumbersome, we're going to we're going to be back in Chongli and, and other areas as soon as we can. We just love it there. Um, what's your opinion on the carved device that uses motion and pressure sensors to measure the feet movement when skiers ski? Well, funny you should ask. I'm going to install a pair of my boots tomorrow. Um, I haven't used them. Uh, I don't think it's the be and end all answer to everything skiing. I think you still have to feel it and do it. But but certainly if the data comes out, I mean, you can, I know it tells you edge angle. You can edge angle by doing it the wrong way or the right way. So I'm not sure if edge angle really is the, the performance indicator, but what I think it has, um, if people don't know carve it, it's a pressure plate under your, your, your liner. And it tells you, uh, it tells you kind of how fast you're moving and skiing. It also tells you how much of your edge angle you have. And it tells you where the pressure on the foot is, is correct. So I want to I want to test it out. I'm going to test it out probably in the next uh, week or two, and I'm going to see if it's accurate to what I feel. And I think the four act balance feature in it is quite good. And uh, the edge angle, if if I'm with a you know, or if you're with a coach and you let's say you turn the legs and you move in with the hip, and the edge angle then is achieved in the correct manner versus versus leaning in or driving the knee, because if you drive the knee, you'll get a good edge angle, but you'll get stuck eventually. So I, I think the carve, I think it's a neat tool and I look forward to kind of experimenting with it. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. What's the biggest difference between CSI level two and level three ski? The, the difference between a level two and level three for ski, um, it's, perform it's the performance level. So, uh, you know, the, the, the demonstrations at the level two are more kind of a, a strong, solid, upper intermediate skier. Uh, and you can demonstrate in uh, varied conditions. Uh, you, can, you can do, uh, you can demonstrate a, a wedge turn, a, a basic or intermediate parallel turn, and um, a stronger parallel turn, shorter or longer variety. And level three, you've got to have a, a competency in a, in a relatively 
a good mogul feel. And I think that's really a big differentiator, not, not mogul that we saw by Richie Berger skiing in, but, you know, kind of in a dark blue, light black run, uh, round moguls, you've got to show that you can control uh, your speed and direction down the fall line there. Plus, you've got to be skiing at the advanced level and in short, medium, and long term. This also being able to demonstrate a good set of technical skills in a in a basic or an intermediate parallel. Okay, does that answer that question? If you if it didn't, then please um, fire up and get. For someone who's training for a higher level, for example, level three or four, what percentage of guided mileage versus self training do you recommend? Um, it depends on the individual. So <clears throat> if somebody's training for level three or level four, uh, <clears throat> ultimately, I think it's great if you can get, uh, you know, like, like if you're working in a ski school, <clears throat> it's nice if you can have a morning session every day and then once or twice a week have a full day session if you're really serious about it. If you can get away to uh, a training camp, um, you know, I think that that will definitely be to your advantage. Uh, so similar to the training camp that we're going to run in Jasper, you know, it's five day training camps are, are specifically, you know, they're to immerse yourself both in the teaching and the skiing. And those will go a, lo go a long way. It's also good to go out and, sk and ski. So, it, you know, in Jasper, we've got two training camps or five days and a couple days in between. So there's a couple days you can go and, and either rest or go out for a bit, just try and work on things think to yourself. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I you know, lo level three is, uh, you know, I often say you pretty much got to be full-time, a full-time steer, full-time in the business, you know, and after your level two, it, it can be a, a two to four year journey. Uh, every, every individual is different. And same for level four, after you get your, your level three, it's generally, if you're dedicated and you train hard, it, it's, it's a two to four year journey as well. And it's not just you know, going out by yourself, but you, you've got to, you know, especially, you know, the level three, you want to be directed. You, you want to know that the movement patterns that you're working on and the terrain that you're getting in is great. And that the exercises, and a lot of people do exercises, but when you do an exercise, the exercise is designed to build a skill. So it's designed to help with balance or it's designed to turn your legs or designed to edge or, or control vertical pressure. Those exercises need to be done correctly. There's no sense doing those exercises if they're not done correctly. And that's where you need a lot of, a lot of guidance with them. Otto, just for your information, Nikita actually got her level three pin last Friday. She's the first mm -hmm. girl in, uh, you know, in the East. She's the first Chinese girl in the East got level three pin. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. So She's now, called inspiration so, now. <laughs> so how many, that's a week ago? A last week ago? Friday, last Friday. last Friday. Okay, so the party's over and now she starts training for a level four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to lure her in. Okay. And I also yeah. noticed there's a comment from Luke talking about, you know, skiing for him is more like a Tai Chi. Uh, I would agree because I know Tai Chi and I understand that, uh, you know, building the pressure is a, it's a progressional process. Uh, it, that's quite like Tai Chi. Although I don't know what is your view about that. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know Tai Chi very much. But mm -hmm. now that you've said that, I wish somebody somebody needs to give me a lesson, and then, <laughs> and then maybe I can answer that question better. <laughs> yeah, maybe look, you can run a Tai Chi camp. <laughs> yeah, come to come to Jasper, and then we'll have a Tai Chi session after skiing and you can, and then you can kind of relate the two. You know, mm -hmm. cross sports, you know, that said, um, you know, and we, uh, I'm, I'm laughing now, but it is great to do other sports and take the learnings, the movement learnings, patterns and balances from other sports. It helps you to learn skiing better, for sure, right? So Taiji, let, let me, uh, yeah, I'd be interested. I, I love learning uh, uh, new sports. Okay. It helps me understand my body better. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's all, all about the feeling and how to feel yourself internally. So there's a lot of uh, similarities in between these two sports. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tiana said to everyone, <laughs> the triangle, the white triangle of death between the, um, you know, the, the bottom leg. When we ski, our, our femurs and our tib fibs should be parallel. Okay. Um, let me just search. So <clears throat> my legs are parallel, right? If you're looking at me, if you're looking at me, my legs are parallel. Okay. And maybe I have my kid fib on the bottom and femur on the top, but everything is parallel all the way up. Okay. And when I move over, it should be parallel. Now, if you're looking at me from the side, right? If you're looking at me from the side, it should be parallel. Okay? And what happens to the skiers is, and this is the lower leg here, see if you can see this, is, is my outside foot gets behind, okay? And then what happens is you look between there and you see that the triangle at the bottom, that would be, the orange would be my outside foot and the yellow would be the inside foot. The inside foot is then ahead and at the bottom here would be my ski. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going in that direction. And if I have that, my, 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 fem, my tib fibs aren't parallel, right? They should be parallel. Okay. That means I'm balanced well. If it's like this, it means my weight's too far forward. And then if my weight's too far forward, I can't turn my legs. That's a result that I can't turn my legs. And then, and then my upper body starts to get involved in, in turning. So I, I start to do to, to, to this. I start to drive the car or drive my skis from the top. And we want to drive it from the bottom. We want to drive it. We want to turn our feet. So that's the white triangle of death. And it's a, it's a humorous name for just being off balance. But what it does is it allows us as a, as a, as a teacher or somebody to identify uh, just kind of a basic balance problem. And that's, you know, when I look at these skiers that we looked at tonight, you know, whether it was Richie in the bumps or on the grooming or, or um, the other skiers, uh, the, you know, their legs are parallel. The feet are side by side. Yes, when, when they bend in, one gets a little bit higher. And so the, the inside leg does get a little bit ahead, but it's, you know, it's very small. It's not, not very big. Okay. Okay. Um, Lynn, do you want to talk? We're, this audience has been very patient and uh, understanding. And we can't hear you, Lynn. Okay, give me a few minutes to run through the decks. And whoever have questions, you can continue you know, sending it through. If we can have time to answer it, we can answer it this week or maybe next week. Otto, we will have a next week conversation, right? Oh, sounds like <laughs> a plan to me. Um, you know, if you've got if you've got some some questions or things you want me to talk about, please uh, fire them off to Lynn. And if you can do that in the ne next couple of days, you know, I uh, I always have to take a bit of time to prepare for these, so I'll go out and get some some more videos or some other things that we can kind of look at and, and talk about. Okay, so whoever got questions regarding skiing, uh, you can send me the questions. And once we got enough questions, we can organize another session with Otto. Thank you so much, Otto, for offering this. And please allow me to run through the deck about the, the ski camp, right? Sure, yeah, thanks. Lynn. Okay. And uh, so if any questions about the camp, uh, you can also ask questions on this. So we are talking about camp in Jasper uh, in you know, April, camp one from April uh, the 4th to 8th, camp two from April the 11th to 15th. So uh, we hope you can join the 10 days camp so that you can immerse yourself uh, with skiing improvement and we can discuss with each other, we learn from each other. And uh, it's going to be one coach to uh, 
the minimum three, maximum seven uh, uh, students. And we will divide our uh, skiers by the skiing level and your, uh, you know, your goal. Uh, so whoever interested get into the group and we need you to register it with uh, auto. Uh, so we have uh, auto's email here. So the early bird rate actually ended on March the 20th. So before that, you need to you know, pay the full amount of the camp. And why us is actually, it's all level four instructors and uh, we really dedicated to your success. And I would say that uh, we, we are trying to create more communications after uh, the slope time so that we can learn from each other, help each other and inspire each other. Uh, there will be, you know, uh, snow training with video analysis, with also the gate and brushes set up. And why in Jasper? So it's the best powder snow in April, and it's best, uh, you know, uh, quality, the price versus, uh, the quality was versus price uh, ski town. And uh, we can go for, you know, Aurora and also Starry Night, uh, which is quite, uh, because it's a dark night reservation area. So here's the budget to help you to understand. I'm going to send the deck uh, in our WeChat group. So uh, basically uh, we encourage to register before March the 20th. So the early bird rate uh, before that day would be 70, uh, 750 plus GST, which is 5%. And if you registered for both camp, you will get a, a further discount, which is uh, 1,300. And for the hotel, so all in all, it's a, a training camp and this is fee you need to pay for the trainers. And for other logistics like hotel, ticket and transportations, it's all on your own, but uh, you know, Auto has been kind enough to get a best price hotel for us and also the lift ticket. Currently, uh, it's uh, 65 per day, but if you are, you are going to be there for the whole April, you will be entitled to 550 for the whole week, uh, whole, whole month. So for the transportations, uh, skiers from Toronto, you can contact me. From Taipei or Hong Kong, you can contact uh, Tong and Alex. And also there's another coordinator uh, named Chow to coordinate uh, skiers from uh, Vancouver. And so here's the camp include which five days uh, training on slope and uh, all level four uh, instructors, video analysis and uh, private training here for brushes and uh, gates. So there will be bombs and off-pista tactic and trainings and uh, there will be science and arts of skiing uh, steeps. And yeah, so it's debunking the myths around techniques and there will be teaching tips, trainings. So all in all, uh, Otto and his team is really dedicated to set you uh, for the next level to be a better skier. And there will be some uh, ask if we got enough uh, participants so um, we can have a level three and a level, level two and a level three exam. Currently, uh, we are applying for level three exam dated on April the 16th and 17th. And we can have uh, avalanche safety trainings. We can have other CSA credit trainings as long as we got uh, at least four participants and we need uh, two days lead time to get everything set it up. So if you are interested, uh, register and uh, you know, find your friends who get similar interest, we can make it happen. So there will be also technical debrief with videos and course prep strategies and yeah, so on and so forth. So it's just like season and party and we just support each other uh, you know, uh, in Jasper. So here's a, uh, Location of Jasper is actually, uh, you can pick any of the three airport, Vancouver, which is uh, 9.5 hours uh, drive. 
Calgary 4.5 hours drive and Edmonton 4 hours drive. So there will be a uh, you know, uh, shuttle from the airport from Calgary and Edmonton uh, to Jasper. And uh, the hotel is in Jasper and there will be 20 minutes uh, uh, drive from Jasper to the ski resort Marmon Basin. So the recommendation is actually for us to get uh, three to four persons as a bubble so that we can rent a car and uh, coordinate. So just talk to your local coordinators after registration. Uh, we can just uh, coordinate to get the best price uh, or best arrangement for every one of us. Okay, I think that is pretty much we want to share. And there will be, you know, coaching staff profile. It will be auto and Colin is actually auto. Yeah, we all know him, right? And the Colin is actually the uh, snow school director of Mormon Basin. And Sophie, she's a girl because we know a lot of girls, more than 50% of girls registered for our camp. So that is why we need a, a girl instructors can help us out. And there will be Paul, you know, Paul is actually the author of Next Level Skier joining us. And also we have Jess. And so this is sample of the arrangement and it's all based on uh, our, you know, it's a, it's a framework, but if we have, uh, uh, you know, a different ask, you can just talk, but Otto is really good at putting together high quality training camp and yeah. So this is uh, what is currently in his uh, plan. And there are other help resources and you can just check it out for the information you need. Uh, I think that is all I want to share with the deck. So any questions and uh, suggestions about this camp? You know, it'd be uh, wonderful to have you. We, we want to make sure that this is uh is so much fun and is, is, is an amazing learning environment. And Jasper is um, so accommodating uh, to our groups. They, they actually want us there. Um, the hotel wants us there. Uh, the ski area wants us there. Um, the, the learning, um, the fun, the town is, is beautiful in the, in the Rockies. Uh, you know, the, the spring there is amazing. There's a, a lot of good weather. I don't guarantee it, but well, there's, there's a lot of really good weather, good snow, good weather. Uh, if you do have questions, for sure, please reach out to Lynn or to myself. Uh, you can you can reach me on uh, WeChat if you're not already linked in with me. Um, I don't know how you find it, but it's uh, my my WeChat tag is Ski with Auto. Right, all one word, Ski with Auto. And um, if you're not connected to me or if you want to answer Ask any questions, please feel free. Happy, happy to. Oh, there, Lynn wrote it down. Ski with Otto. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Otto is also in the uh, HPC uh, Jasper group. And if you want to ask him questions, just add him and uh, raise your questions in English if possible. If not, there's a, you know, you know, WeChat has a translation. So that's another way. So uh, looking forward to see you in Jasper in April. And yeah. So thanks. Thanks, everyone. I wanted to, there were, were great questions tonight and uh, your, your input on how you want to ski and, and descriptive words was amazing too. So hopefully you got something from me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Otto. I need to let you go, but I will stay online for a while. And in case any questions that ask, you can just open your you know, Mike and talk to me. And thank you so much, Otto. Thank you, everybody. What, have thank a wonderful you, Otto. Good night. Bye. Bye, Good night. Bye, Alice. Bye. 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 Hey, Alice, are you going to join the camp? Go to Jasper and take your level three. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, but it's like a really... I don't have that many like a vacation. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, we can use Chinese. Auto has already gone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to go, but I don't have a vacation. I should go. But I'm very jealous. Yeah, 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 I'm very
我不知道那个默默、嗯，他好像说过要他想去，但是我不知道。默默默默应该会去的。他是他定了吗？他应该定了。哦。咱们咱们这个营咱们这个营的特色就是美女美女比帅哥多，你知道吧？然后我跟奥拓说、嗯，为什么你会吸引你你会对你这么这么吸引女生呢？他说你别跟我太太讲。这、啊，哈<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>我还不知道帮我注册了是吧？那太好了，他他。不知道他能不能，他那个腰，他不能天天那么滑，谁知道啊？其实就是一个 party 了，我觉得我们也是，嗯，也是好久没见了，嗯、知道好多美女去啊 ，Shirley、默默、嗯、Vanessa， 好多呢，嗯，哦，太幸福了，嗯，他们，就我听着是有一周的，有两周的，有三周的是吧？呃，其实主要是两周，第三周要不要做，我们可能再来看。因为其实本身这个营最早的想法就是想，其实是觉得原来今年没有华人进四级的 camp 嘛，据我所知，然后所以 Otto 跟 Paul 两个人想想整一个，就是让大家为下一级 level four camp 做准备，但后来也是因为国内的疫情防控啊，好多航班取消了，然后这次的话呢，因为飞机就是从国内的飞机，按理说是应该飞俄罗斯领空。并且飞过北极的，那么现在呢？航班改线也改得一塌糊涂的，所以按照现在看来的话，国内能够来的人应该是很少了。对，这就是现现状。嗯，那就看看咱们北美谁有运气能够跟他一起滑喽。是啊，哎呀，嗯嗯，就是这个。好呀，我先把这个录音也停了。